Welcome, Waffle Wolfettes. So we are back with a brilliant Lake Seasons greetings on the PlayStation 5. And I hope you guys and girls are having an absolutely fantastic day. My day's a bit better now because I just had myself a cup of tea and that always makes every day better. But in the previous video, it was uh, relatively uneventful compared to some of the other episodes, but we were delivering packages once again. And then we met up with Frank in the middle of the forest and he's got himself a random shed full of fireworks and he basically told us that he's been selling illegal fireworks to people and the ones that he can't sell he's going to set off a massive firework display on New Year's Eve so we had a chat with him about that and then we met up with Maureen at Moe's Diner we had a little bit of a chat with her about the New Year's Eve party and we also spoke to Ilsa and Gabe two of the people that are part of that TV crew that are currently stranded here and they was just asking me about Providence Oaks because they're going to be filming a series about little American villages. So uh, yeah, that's basically all that happened in the previous video. But what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be ending the day. And then I think we should be going straight on our fishing trip with Robert. So yeah, let's get straight into things. I've got no idea what's going on over there. I said it at the end of the previous video. But it looks like there's been some sort of collision over there. And it wasn't my fault because I wasn't even in the area when it happened. So yeah, I think we might need to call the police. Is there even a police station around here? I've seen a, oh shit, the police is there. I'm blocking the road, shit. <laughs> I'm blocking the road, sorry. I reckon it's most likely that dude in the green's fault. Look at him, look where his car's parked. He's definitely just like swung out or something. Troublemakers. Friday evening. I'll get it. Hello? A uh, very good evening. A am I talking to Mrs. Uh, Emily Weiss? Yes, sir. That would be me. Ah, fantastic. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, my name is uh, Christian Carmichael, and I represent Fly Into Florida. Oh, uh, hi there. I, I have great news for you, Mrs. Weiss. It's been a while, but, uh, do you perhaps remember entering into our fly into Florida sweepstakes? Um, now that you mention it, I think so. Yeah. Was that the one on the back of the juice carton? That's the one. And I am more than happy to tell you that you are the winner of the grand prize. <sighs> the grand prize? Wow, <laughs> Fantastic. Um, I'm afraid I've forgotten what it was. <laughs> Could you refresh my memory a little bit? Uh, uh, no problem, Mrs. Weiss. Uh, you have won a two-week trip to Florida for two. Wow. F Florida? Really? I won? I have never won anything in my life. Uh, hold on. I need to tell my husband. Honey, we won. I'm talking to a gentleman from flying to Florida. And he says we've won a two-week holiday for two. I mean, I'm pretty sure Thomas could hear everything that you were just saying. And he just did not seem to give a shit. Get out of here. Florida? Whoa. Tell him he's dreaming. It's probably a timeshare scam. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I would have already have hung up. The second I answered that phone and they said I'd won, I probably would have hung up. So I would have missed out on this. <laughs> Tell him he's dreaming. It's probably a timeshare scam. What? No, that can't be. I did enter that contest. D Hold on. Um, my husband is unsure if this is really true. I mean, you do hear a lot about phone scams these days. Uh, we'll do our absolute best to take away all your concerns. You've got plenty of time to let it all sink in. Uh, next, we'll be sending you an extra special envelope. Ooh. It will contain a confirmation letter, airline tickets, hotel tickets, and I totally forgot to say this earlier. A $500 check covering any additional expenses. Wow. I can't believe this is happening. Well, it most definitely is, Mrs. Weiss. And we'll be making sure you both have the time of your life. There's one thing I must stress. The dates can't be altered. So if you have plans for the first two weeks of September, this would be a great moment to change them. And I hope this answers all of your questions for now. Congratulations on winning. And we look forward to seeing you fly into Florida. Thank you. Bye. 
I, I think I need to sit down for a moment. Oh, Florida. Oh, uh, that's Robert. S sorry, honey. I, I can't celebrate with you right now. But I'll make it up to you tomorrow night at Moe's. Mm, I will hold you to that. <laughs> Have fun on the ice, hon. And when you start to freeze out there, just think of sunny Florida. Oh, she didn't even get angry with you. She was just like, yeah, have a good time. See that right there? That is an amazing wife. Well, this don't look safe. <laughs> oh, boy. Drilling a hole? Getting that fire pit going? Ice fishing's a lot of work. And it's cold. But we're fishing all right. Yeah, because uh, I think... Because I think that's what, go that's what happens when Meredith comes to uh, Tan in the main game. Your uh, mum and dad have gone to Florida for a two-week trip and then you play through the game as Meredith, you take over the job and it's Meredith's holiday, even though she's technically working, being a postwoman. But uh, then near the end of the game, I think uh, Thomas and Emily start talking about wanting to move out of there and live out of there. So yeah, it, this is why it's good to play as DLC. It, 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 it fills in a lot of gaps and stuff from the main game. Probably would be good to play this then the main game, actually. Um, all right. Well, now that we're here with Robert, now we can murder him. So now that he's dug a hole in the ice, Robert, uh, Thomas, we can murder Robert. You know, then he won't be able to take your daughter. <laughs> Great stuff, Robert. Thanks for taking me along. Let's just catch one and get the hell out of here. Are you sure that fire... Exactly, that's what I was going to think. That's what, was, that's what I was going to say. Although heat does rise, doesn't it? So probably not. Uh... Let's just catch one and get the hell out of here. <laughs> that might take hours, regardless. Man, it's nice out here. This setting could use a guitar. Yeah, real nice, Robert. That's why we're going to bury you out here, mate. <laughs> right beneath the ice where no one will find you until summer. Campfires and guitars, not exactly fond memories. Why? I kind of want to know now. Campfires and guitars don't exactly bring back fond memories for me. Me neither. That guitar scene in Animal House pretty much nailed it. Hey, what was Emily going on about when I picked you up? You guys are going to Florida? Yeah, apparently we won a two-week trip. Wow, congrats. Not that Florida's my cup of tea, if I'm honest. I don't remember asking, Robert. I don't remember bloody asking, Robert. When did I ask your opinion about Florida, buddy? <laughs> Someplace else you'd rather go? You'd rather stay in good old P.O., huh? Oh, you'd rather stay in good old P.O., huh? Yep. I'm perfectly happy with what I've got right here. Good man. Good man. P.O. is great, but it is also a good but is it also a good place to meet someone? Oh no, I don't want to write that. No, we're gonna start fanning the flames. I will say it anyway. P.O. is great, but is it also a good place to meet someone? Uh, I know what you're hitting at. The answer's no, of course. But maybe this is what I need right now. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with being on your own, buddy. Nothing wrong at all. Yeah, just give it a little time, yeah. So many people tell you that you gotta meet someone. You ain't gotta meet no one, mate. You get someone when you wanna get someone. If you wanna get someone at all, you don't need to. You wanna live a whole life on your own, you do what you want, buddy. Haven't you been by yourself long enough now? Fucking hell, what's the matter with you, Thomas? I know we came out here to kill him, but that, we don't need to, like, emotionally kill him. We just wanted to kill him, kill him. Yeah, just give it a little time. Or a lot. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. <sighs> Wouldn't it be ideal if Mrs. Wright dropped by my house one day? <laughs> That's literally what happens as well. <laughs> that is literally what happens. Meredith brings you a big old package and then you proceed to give her your package. You filthy devil. Catching a, winnily, uh, catching a winning lottery ticket would also be ideal. <laughs> and also quite improbable. But you never know. Certainly. And also quite improbable, but you never know. Let's drink to that. Would be a shame if Emily filled that flask of yours for nothing. That is true. Although you did tell me to bring booze, and we didn't bring any booze. <laughs> Take it easy, designated driver. <laughs> One sip won't hurt, sir. Cheers. Now let's catch a fish and get the hell out of here. <laughs> I kind of feel like you don't even enjoy fishing. And now that's it. Thomas has now killed Robert. Robert's dead now, okay? We won't be seeing him no more in this game. He's dead. Hey, Thomas. 
Do you have a minute? I've got about about 20 minutes, Frank. Sure, Frank, what's up? As long as it doesn't get me into trouble, Frank. Yeah, that too. As long as it doesn't get me into trouble, Frank. Listen, I just got a heads up from one of my buddies at HQ. He said Walter Morgan left for P.O. with tires screeching. I, I need to lay low for a while. If you see him, you haven't seen me, okay? Gotcha, Frank. Don't worry about him. Frank, I'm not sure about this. Frank, I'm not sure about this. Holy crap! Morgan's on the premises! I'm not here. <laughs> What's Morning, he... Mr. Weiss. It's Mr. Incredible! How you doing, Mr. Incredible? Jesus! You lost a little bit of your gains, but yeah, that's definitely Mr. Incredible. Good Morgan, Mr. Morning! <laughs> uh, good Morgan, Mr. Morning. I'm looking for Frank. Could you tell me where he is, please? Frank? Frank Coleman? Haven't seen him here. Yes, so he's hiding behind this here counter. No, we can't do that. We can't do that. We ain't no snitch. Frank? Frank Coleman? Uh, haven't seen him here. And where is he if he's not here? What the fuck should I know? Somewhere else. Probably out delivering. Could be anywhere. Exactly. We're postmen, for God's sake. He's probably out delivering. Could be anywhere. Hmm. I guess I'll have to be patient then. We've received a report that a man with a mustache dressed in a light blue shirt was offering illegal fireworks to people in the postal office parking lot. If that man is Frank, and I'm sure it is, then that's strike three for Mr. Coleman. Please tell him I'm looking for him. Have a good day. Is he gone? Yes, Frank. Holy crap, that was a close call. Thanks so much, Thomas. I guess Frank Coleman's going into hiding for a while. <laughs> You're such a troublemaker, Frank. Jesus, even in the main game you were causing nothing but trouble. You need, to, you need to pack in your antics, buddy. That sounds like a good idea, Frank. Frank, don't you think it's better to just come clean? Well, look, if it's strike free, it probably isn't a good idea to come clean. That sounds like a good idea, Frank. See you Sunday evening. I guess we'll have to play poker with the curtains closed. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about the poker evening. Oh, we've also got a date night with Emily as well, haven't we? I think. Uh, where's my journal? Ice fishing with Robert. Oh, oh, the dinner date's with Emily's tonight. Nice. Then we've got a poker night with the guys. New Year's Eve party. I guess we are going to it. Nothing planned for Monday yet. Probably a good idea not to plan anything on Monday, because Monday's always the worst day of the week, ain't it? Happy Saturday, everyone. Get ready for a pet peeve from Joseph. P.O. Positive for pet peeves. Jack, I've been watching that TV series everyone's been raving about. What, what's it called? A hamburger with fries? <laughs> I expected a charming sitcom like Bon Appetit, but instead got treated to a lousy mix of mediocre puns and gratuitous filings. If this is where TV shows are heading, then I'm heading the other way. Oh boy. Oh, well, I'll bet you'll have the road all to yourself, Joseph. On to the weather. We're starting the day sunny, but we'll have lots of snow for you folks later on. Enough talking. Here are some tunes. Oh, nice. So when we're enjoying our uh, dinner date with Emily, or whatever we're doing, it's going to be snowing. Lovely. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Oh, we're going in the general store. There's going to be a lot of drama in there. And it looks like we're going to be heading back to Grove Street as well. Oh, there's only three par parcels today. That's Grove Street. Where's that one? Is that, uh... 300 Lake Road. That's not the motel, is it? That might be the, uh... That might be, um... The garage. The mechanic. Yeah. A belated Christmas gift? Maybe. Or oh, that might be the part. Yeah, because they couldn't fix the uh, TV crew's van because they had to order a special part, didn't they? Maybe that's the part we're delivering. So we throw that in the water in the uh, lake, then they won't be able to leave, and we can really annoy Connor Price. <laughs> really ruin his Christmas. All right, here we go. Nancy's going to start being her usual annoying self. I don't think you were this annoying in the main game, but you've become such a sassy bitch. Ah, oh, there you are. Could you bring this box over to the diner? And if they ask, there's no discount. 
So I'm guessing that's the food for the Christmas Eve party. And Maureen wanted a discount and you said no. I could, but I'd have to charge you for it. Uh, I could, but I'd have to charge you for it. Oh well, then don't. I couldn't care less about that party. <laughs> well, we, we know that. We already know that, Nancy. You don't need to tell us, Nancy. Oh, it's for the New Year's party. And it's not my problem either. Nah, nah, we'll do it. We don't want to spoil it. But I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. If I actually get the option, I'm going to tell them about uh, there being a the discount. I'm going to really fuck with you, Nancy. Oh, wait. It's for the New Year's Eve party? Uh, all right. I'll do it. Thanks. And remember, no discount. <laughs> That's not my business. Just going to drop off the box. That's not my business. Just going to drop off the box. I love that bell noise. I love it. You always get it in the off license, don't you? That little noise, that little ding ding when you walk in. Oh, now we've got to drive all the way to. Bl Why do the cars keep flipping, evaporating? Yeah, what's, what's going on? <laughs> They're evaporating. We should never park our car here ever again, Thomas. Because this part of town is rough. It's almost as rough as that other part of town where you've got weird floating rocks. And they're not even small rocks either, they're boulders. Alright, alright, keep it cool, keep it cool. Like uh, I think it was Wolfman said in the comments, don't make eye contact with anyone. <laughs> We're in Grove Street, we're in the ends now. We don't want to mess with anyone. Well, I think I will say, because in my area there's a lot of gangs. Especially on the council estate and that where I live. I feel like not making eye contact isn't always a good idea. Because if you walk along all timidly, putting your head down and stuff like that, I feel like that makes them come for you. You know? I feel like maybe you should look at them, you know? Kind of, uh, you know, just give them a look, you know? And then just go about your day. Don't stare at them because then that's the same situation, you know? Then they're going to want to fight you because you're antagonising them. Because okay. they don't like to be looked at because they're a bunch of delicate daffodils. But, uh, yeah, I just, I don't know. I feel like keeping your head down, not looking at them, ain't always a good idea. So sometimes I just a glance, acknowledge them, and then just carry on about your day. That's what seems to be the best idea in my experience. Not, not that any gangs have tried to beat me up. But, yeah. Whenever I've seen groups of people, I just look at them and I just carry on with my day. Obviously, if you live in a, an area with a lot of gangs, you know, maybe don't take my advice. <laughs> Just because it's worked for me doesn't mean it'll work for you. I don't want you to look at the gang and then the next thing you know you get shot or some shit or stabbed. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I feel like the, the timid approach isn't a good idea because it makes you seem like a target, you know. Unless you're the ladies, of course, then just get out of there. Just get out of there. Steady, steady. If we run them over. Oh, the flipping, I think the uh, the van's got a sensor on it because it just immediately braked and it wasn't me that did it. <clears throat> Is it this one? Yeah. Thinking about it actually. They look like postcards. Thinking about it, actually, I think I might have a delivery coming today. Probably, if it's the same Royal Mail delivery dr delivery driver as usual, he'll be here within the next, well, probably just as I end the video. But there could be a knock by the end of this video. So just a word of warning. You might hear Sammy go crazy. You may as well just leave your glasses on at this rate, uh, Thomas. You're clearly blind, mate. I don't even think you should really be driving. Then again, maybe he's just got a... Uh, he might be long-sighted, you know? So everything up in his face is blurry, but he can drive fine. That's basically what... Oh, there it is! There it is! There's the mutant boulder! Every time! This town is a flipping nightmare. Mutant boulders. 
Evaporating cars? Jesus. Yeah, that's why, that's why I need to wear it. Even though I don't never wear my glasses. I haven't worn my glasses since I was 16. Which was uh, almost 16 years ago. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, I'm, uh... I'm long-sighted. Anything up in my face is always blurry. But manageable. Okay, uh, I think we'll go... Oops. Yeah, we'll go down this way first. It does look like we're going to be... Was there something else on my journal? Deliver parcel from Nancy to Maureen. Oh. Okay. I didn't think that was something you really needed to write in your journal, mate. Now, we'll come down here first. It does look like we're going to be going to... Uh, Ben and Laurie's place, where the, uh, the the mechanics, and then we'll head back to uh, Mo's diner. And then I'll most likely have to end the video, depending on how long we're talking to Ben for. Who's this? Is this Mildred's house? Or is that Mildred over there? I think Mildred had a cat letterbox, didn't she? Oh, maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. No, it can't be Mildred's house. There's a random blue van in the front. I don't think Mildred drives. Then again, she's got a son, isn't she? Is this Mildred's then? No, that's not Mildred. Maybe it's over... Oh, this might be it then. No? Oh, no, there it is. There, let's see. She's got a cat litter box. <laughs> that's Mildred's house. God, I love Mildred and her cats. Oh, car service. Yep, we are going there. Three hundred Lake Road. Part and parcel. <laughs> what did I tell you about saying that, Thomas? What did I tell you? Oh look, ghost blasters. Yet another heavy package for you, Ben. Let me take that off your hands, Thomas. You know I feel guilty enough as it is. Having you lug around those car parts week in and week out? Yours are the most weighty packages. Now, don't make you feel more guilty. What are you doing, Thomas? That's the job, Ben, exactly. That's the job, you know. You don't, don't like it, retire. That's the job, Ben. Neither snow nor rain nor heavy packages. Stay these, these couriers, couriers from, from the, the swift, swift completion, completion of their appointed, appointed rounds. rounds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, though. If you don't mind me saying, you're getting up there. What? Ever think of hanging up the old coat and bag? That's flipping rude. I just brought you a package and you're calling me old. <laughs> we can't all have our daughters following our footsteps. Recently, yeah. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. I don't remember you uh, saying you want to retire. Hey, we can't all have our daughters following our footsteps when we retire the way you can. <laughs> well, that's true enough. Son of a gun. Is the engine part for the news van? Didn't expect them to come in so soon. Great. Now they'll be able to roam around P.O. Ah, I'd better leave you to it then. Uh, I'd better leave you to it then. Yep. With any luck, that thing will be up and running before the end of the day. Don't rush it. You're getting up there yourself. Hey, don't rush it, Ben. Remember, you're getting up there yourself. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Now get going, you old timer. You cheeky devil. I ain't bringing none of your packages no more. You know what? I'm going to leave your packages outside the door like I do with the other people. And you're going to have to deal with them getting wet. Especially if it's like uh, one of those car parts. Well, then again, it's the... Uh, was it? Was it 1966? Or 1986? 19, it's 1985 at the moment, ain't it? Yeah, so most cars are still the old-fashioned cars where there's not too much going on in terms of electronics. But if this was like 2023, you wouldn't want me leaving the car parts outside because there's so much electrical stuff that gets wet, it's going to completely fuck it up. So, you know, you carry on with the attitude, Ben, I'll leave your parcels outside. And I'll continue the uh, grudge to your daughter as well. So when she is dealing with the 2023 cars, providing that, uh, well, I don't think Thomas will even be alive then. But if he's still alive and he's still being a delivery man, I'm going to leave all the parts outside and get ruined in the rain. So watch yourself, Ben. Watch yourself, buddy. Oh, 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 look! Oh, 
a little cutie. Hello, buddy. I didn't know there was foxes. Oh, that's nice. Nothing more beautiful than a little bright orange fox running around in the crisp white snow. Oh, that's nice. If you haven't seen my uh, Wolf Quest video with the foxes, make sure you watch it. Just search Wolf Quest on my channel. Don't search it on Google because um, it will come up with some random video game called Wolf Quest. I've, I've never even heard of it. But yeah, my video won't come up, of course, as it never does. But just, yeah, just write Be Wolf the Wolf uh, Wolf Quest and you'll see it. Watch all of them, but specifically the Fox one, which I did this year after like a five year hiatus. <laughs> Not my fault, of course. So much has happened over those, that over those last five years. Oh, 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 hang on, hang on. Don't want to forget the package again. A belated Christmas gift? Maybe. Hi, Thomas. Oh. Please tell me that's a big box full of snacks from the general store. This is a big box full of snacks from the general store. But without a discount on what's inside. Delivered to you free of charge. Yeah, we said we're not getting involved with the discount stuff. Delivered to you free of charge. You're a doll, Thomas. Did Nancy Carlisle mention anything about a discount? I'm just to, I'm just here to deliver the box, Maureen. I'm just here to deliver the box, Maureen. She'd better give me that discount. But I wouldn't put it past her to charge full price for snacks she'd otherwise have to throw out in a few weeks anyway. That heartless creature. Maureen, easy now. She just drives a hard bargain. Huh? That sums her up pretty well. I mean, it does sum her up pretty well, but you don't want to judge people because we don't know why she's like this, you know? We don't know why she don't like Christmas. Now, I'm not very fond of Christmas, really, and there's loads of reasons for it. I'm not like Nancy at all. I'll still have a good time in that, but, yeah. There's always reasons for it. So, yeah, I don't think we should say that, just in case. Just in case I regret it. Maureen, easy now. She just drives a hard bargain. Pardon my French, Thomas, but she always manages to drive me up a wall. Yeah. I'll stop bothering you now. I'll think of something. Don't you worry. Think of something for what? How are you doing, everyone? Oh, there's a, oh, you got the video game in the corner. I guess you could speak to Laurie about it. Yes, I think it's that Ghost Blasters game. You just gotta shoot varying different waves of ghosts that change as, it, as the game progresses, if I remember correctly. We played it with Meredith, so I'm not gonna play it again. Just watch the main playthrough with uh, Meredith. If you're enjoying this, you'll enjoy the main game, of course. Okay, right, we're gonna drive back to Tan, and I'm gonna have to once again end it before I get to the post office, because I think uh, once we're done with that, it's gonna go straight into our um, date night with Emily, so I don't wanna have to end the video in the middle of that, so it's best I end it now. I think it's been 30 minutes. Well, 29 minutes. By the time I get back to town, it'll be 30 minutes. <clears throat> oh, look, I've just noticed the snow started. <laughs> God, I'm flipping blind. They did say it was going to start snowing uh, once we, uh, once the evening comes. Oh, that must be the statue they were talking about. When they were talking about, I think it was in the previous video, we were telling uh, Frank that is he, isn't he worried that Walter Morgan might show up? And he said, nah, he doesn't drive in the snow. Last time he totaled his car on the deer statue. It must be that statue. <laughs> well, the statue held up pretty well. Better than his car, at least. But then again, I guess he wasn't scared of driving in the snow because he turned up today. Yeah, quite a lot of stuff happened in this, pre in this video. The previous video is pretty uneventful, but there's been quite a lot of stuff in this one. Very nice. Man, why can't it snow like this? Come on, England. Sort your shit out and start snowing again. Ridiculous. I've had enough of it. I've had enough of grey sky and rain. Give me some fucking snow. Come on. I even like donate all my bloody presents to charity if it snows every day in January, and I will do that. I mean it. Alright, well... 
Thanks for watching Wolf Wobbits. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully the commentary was much better than the previous video. If it was, you can thank PG Tips for that. And yeah, like, share, and join the pack today.